Hi, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I'm going to talk about sickle cell disease. Now, sickle cell disease is a disease of red blood cells. And you can see I've got a couple um, of pictures here of red blood cells. One is a cutaway in which uh, you can sort of see inside the red blood cells. And inside each red, red blood cells are very simple cells, just a cell membrane surrounding a cytoplasm in which a large quantity of hemoglobin is dissolved. And hemoglobin is the protein that uh, carries oxygen to the cells around our bodies. Hemoglobin is a globular protein, which means that it's sort of formed into little balls and ball shapes, or you know, roughly a spherical shape. Um, and you can see here, I have a cutaway view where you can see the hemoglobin on the inside, and then you can see, uh, just to remind you, red blood cells are a biconcave disc. Um, they are very pliable because, again, they don't have a lot of structural elements. Um, they just have a simple cell membrane, so they can sort of squeeze into different shapes to fit through narrow vessels. But what happens in sickle cell disease is there is a genetic mutation which causes a very slight change in hemoglobin. So in some conditions, like in low oxygen conditions or in conditions of dehydration, the hemoglobin, instead of staying in its globular form, gets stuck together, it sticks to itself, and it forms itself into long, rigid, rod-shaped polymers. And when this happens, sort of stretches out the cytoplasm of this, the cell so it loses its nice um, pliable biconcave disc shape and it becomes a rigid, sharp uh, sickle shape. Now these sickles don't, don't flow through blood vessels very well. So, you know, typically a biconcave disc will flow through quite nicely because it can kind of squeeze itself down, but the sickled cells get stuck within the walls of the vessel, and this causes what's called vaso-occlusion. And sickle cell disease is really sort of characterized by what are, are called vaso-occlusive crises, and someone with sickle cell disease will have recurrent episodes of vaso-occlusive crises throughout their lives that often occur uh, a half a dozen to a dozen times per year and last for several weeks. Because these are sort of blocking blood flow, what happens is we end up with areas of ischemia and infarction that causes severe pain and can lead to organ damage. So really, and it can really affect any part of the body. We'll, we'll talk about the effects on the body in a few minutes. First, I want to talk a little bit about the nature of the disease. Sickle cell disease is an autosomal recessive genetic disorder. And it's caused by a mutation in the 11th chromosome. Now remember, each of our cells has two copies of each pro chromosome, right? We have one that comes from our mother and one that comes from our father. So this is the 11th chromosome. And in this case, I drew the mutation in just one side of the chromosome. This would not be enough to cause disease. This would give someone what is called the sickle cell trait. Now the reason this is the sickle cell disease is known as a recessive genetic disorder. That means in order to manifest the disease you have to receive a, the same mutation from both your mother and your father. If you have only one copy of of the chromosome with the mutation, then you will develop the sickle cell trait, which means that you can pass the disease on to your children. You may be able to if you partner with someone else who has the sickle cell trait, but uh, you will not manifest signs and symptoms of the disease. Okay, so again, uh, sickle cell disease is characterized by episodes of vaso-occlusion that are caused by these sickle cells getting hung up in the small vessels, and this is what causes the signs and symptoms, the periodic signs and symptoms of the disease. Now, what precipitates the vaso-occlusive crisis? I want to talk about that a little bit first. There's three things that, that can precipitate it. One is, is cold, which decreases perfusion and causes decreased oxygen in local areas. 
so cold is one. Another is dehydration. I'm drawing here an empty cup to symbolize the dehydration. So one is cold, two is dehydration, and the third is decreased oxygen. Okay, so those are the three things that can cause it. And what does it cause? Well, it can cause a number of things. First of all, it can cause, um, it can cause, I'm going to draw a little picture of our finger bones here. It can cause infarction, it can cause infarction of a bone. And when you have infarction of a bone in a finger, it causes a condition called dactylitis. Dactylitis is one of the uh, first signs uh, and symptoms that occur in children between one and six years of age when, uh, at, at the first onset of the disease. And it's caused by infarction of a small bone in the finger or foot. It causes severe pain. Um, from as you can imagine, an infarcted bone is going to hurt a lot, and it also causes uh, significant inflammation around that joint. Now, infarction can also occur in other bones in the body, and also it can actually occur within the bone marrow. So, if you can imagine, you know, many of the bones are actually filled with sort of fatty marrow, and when it's infarcted, actually chunks of that fatty marrow can die and uh, travel into the blood vessels through the heart and into the lungs, causing a pulmonary embolus. Okay, so, um, so it can cause injury to the bone. It can also cause significant injury to the spleen. Um, if you imagine, uh, the spleen is an organ that sort of cleanses the blood um, and, and destroys the um, senescent and uh, irregular aberrant uh, red blood cells. And so actually the altered uh, sickled red blood cells can get trapped and be sequestered within the red, the red pulp of the spleen. And this can cause significant inflammation and, and also the vasoocclusion can cause infarction. And the spleen, um, parts of the spleen can, can begin to die. If this happens very acutely, if much of the spleen um, becomes inflamed and infarcted very, very quickly, we can end up with, hem with splenic rupture and hemorrhage which can be a very severe acute event. If, if sort of micro em, um, in, emboli and infarctions occur over time, just slowly over time, the entire spleen can sort of die off piece by piece, causing functional asplenally. This functional asplenally can cause significant immunosuppression, which can lead to infection. And these infections can be very severe, like, uh, like meningitis, osteomyelitis, um, severe pneumonias, and sepsis, in fact, uh, severe infections are one of the major causes of mortality in patients with sickle cell disease. And one of the mainstays of treatment is actually prevent, just preventing infections. Uh, damage to the liver over time is common. Um, that, that can lead to cholestasis and chronic jaundice. Uh, damage to the kidneys is, is very common. It can occur in about 20% of patients that uh, develop chronic renal insufficiency. Um, and also, in, on occasion, acute renal failure during a vaso-occlusive crisis. Uh, the kidneys are particularly prone to uh, vaso-occlusion because the glomerulus is, is um, a narrow area that easily sort of the, the sickled cells easily get hung up on. Um, and also, the, the kidneys are very uh, hypermetabolic, requiring a lot of oxygen, so they're very prone to infarction. In men with sickle cell disease, um, preaprism is common um, because what happens is blood is able to flow into the corp corpus cavernosum but um, is not able to make its way out because there's occlusion in the microvessels um, leading out of the corpus cavernosum. This leads to a very um, painful condition that is a medical emergency that needs to be, uh, that needs, needs to be dealt with quickly. Now, also, I mentioned a little bit about the lungs. The lungs are, can be affected by pulmonary emboli and can also be infected by um, pneumonia. There's a condition called acute chest syndrome that in which a patient with sickle cell disease um, comes in complaining of severe chest pain, and this is often due to either pulmonary emboli um, or pneumonia or um, just microinfarctions in the lung and um, can actually lead to um, to acute respiratory failure, so it needs to be taken very seriously. As you can see, there really is no area of the body that remains unaffected by sickle cell disease. It's a disease that's, again, characterized by recurrent painful episodes of vasoocclusion, and both acute and chronic organ injuries, which can lead to, uh, to organ failure.